चैप्टर टू कंटेंट्स ऑफ गीता समराइज ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय संजय सेड ऑन सीइंग अर्जुना फुल ऑफ कंपैशन हिज माइंड डिप्रेस्ड हिज आईज हिज आईज फुल ऑफ टीयर्स मधुसूदना कृष्णा स्पोक द फॉलोइंग वर्ड्स द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड सेड माय डियर अर्जुन हाउ हैव दिस इम्प्योरिटीज कम अपॉन यू दे आर नॉट एट ऑल बिफिटिंग अ मैन हु नोज द वैल्यू ऑफ लाइफ दे लीड नॉट टू हायर प्लैनेट्स बट टू इम्फेमी O son of Parth do not yield to the degrading importance it does not become you give up such petty weakness of heart and desire o chair chest chastiser of enemy Arjun said o killer of enemies o killer of madhu How can I counter attack with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of lives of great souls who are my teachers even though desiring worldly gains they are superiors If they are killed everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood nor do we know which is better conquering them or being conquered by them if we killed sons of dhritarashtra we should not care to live yet they are now standing before us in the battlefield now i am confused about my duty and have lost all the composure because of miserly weakness in this connection i am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me now i am your disciple om namah shivaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and a soul surrendered unto you please instruct me om I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I am not to be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous unrebelled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the dem- demigods in heaven. Sanjay said Having spoken thus Arjun Chastier of enemies told Krishna Govinda I shall not find sorry Govinda I shall not fight and fell silent O descendant of Bharata at that time Krishna smiling in the midst of both the armies spoke the following words to the grief stricken Arjuna The supreme personality of God had said while speaking learn words you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead never was there a time when i did not exist nor you nor all these kings nor in the future shall all of us cease to be as the embodied soul continuously passes in his body in this body from boyhood oh kya pad rahi hai pagal is as the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes on to another body after death at death a sober person is not bewildered by such a change 
O son of Kunti, the non the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in the due course are like appearance and disappearance of winter and summer season. They arise from sense perception, O skin of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. O best among men, Arjun, the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress, is steady in both, in both, is certainly eligible for liberation. Those who are seers of truth have concluded that of non-existence, there is no endurance of the eternal, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. That with pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. The material body of the indestructible, immeasurable and eternal living entities is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharat. Neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer nor he who thinks it slain is in knowledge, for the self slays nor not, nor is slain. For the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing and premial. He is not slain when the body is slain. O Partha how can a person who knows the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material body, giving up the old and useless ones. The soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. This individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be neither burned nor dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable and eternally the same. It is said that soul is invisible, inconvincible inconceivable and immutable. It is said that soul is invisible, inconceivable and immutable. Knowing this, you should not grieve for the body. If however you think that the soul will always be born and die forever, you still have no reason to lament. O oh, mighty armed, one who has taken his birth is sure to die, and after death one is sure to take birth again. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. All created beings are unmanifest in their beginning manifest in their interim state interim state all the created beings are unmanifest in the beginning manifest in their interim state and unmanis unmanifest again when annihilated so what need is there for lamentation
Some look on soul as amazing. Some describe him as amazing. Some hear of him as amazing. While others, even after hearing about him, cannot understand him at a, at all. O descendant of Bharata, he who dwells in the body can never be slain. Therefore, you need not grieve for any living beings. Consider your specific duty as a Kshatriya. You should know that there is no bit better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles and so there is no need for hesitation. O Partha, happy as the Kshatriyas, to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening for them the doors of heavenly planets. If, however, you do not perform your religious duty of fighting, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. People will always seek of infamy and for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only and thus they will consider you insignificant. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. You, what would, sorry, what could be more painful for you? O son of Kunti, either you will be killed on battlefield and attain the heavenly planets or you will conquer and enjoy the earth, earthly, wind, earthly kingdom. Therefore, get up with determination and fight. Do thou fight for the sake of fighting, without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat, and by so doing, you shall never incur sin. Thus far, I have described this knowledge to you through analytical study. Now listen as I explain it in the terms of working without fruitive results. O son of Parth, when you act in such knowledge, you can free yourself from the bondage of words. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution. And a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous types of fears. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O beloved child of Kurus, the intelligent of those who are irresolute in many branched men of small knowledge are very much attached to flowerly words of vedas which recommend various fruitive act activities for elevation to heavenly planets resultant good birth power and so forth being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. In the mind of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to Supreme Lord does not take place. The Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature. O Arjun, become transcendental to these three modes. Be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self. All purpose served by small well all purpose served by small well can at once be served by great reservoir of water. 
Similarly, all purposes of Vedas can be served to one who knows the purpose behind them. You have right to perform your prescribed duty. But are you entitled to the fruits of action? Never consider yourself the cause of results of your activities and you and never be attached to your to not doing your duty. Perform your duty equipoised. O Arjun, abandoning all attachments to success or failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. O Dhananjay, keep all abominable activities far distant by devotional service and in the consciousness surrender on, unto the Lord. Those who want to enjoy fruits of their work are misers. A man engaged in devotional service rids himself of both good and bad reactions even in his life. Therefore, strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. By thus engaging in devotional service to the Lord, great sages or devotees free themselves from the result of work in the material world. In this way, they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain the state beyond all miseries. When your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. When your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowerly languages of Veda and when it remains fixed in the trance of self-realization, then you will be, then you will have attained the Divine Consciousness Arjun said, O Krishna, what are the symptoms of one who consci whose consciousness is thus merged in transcendence? How does he speak and what is his language? How does he sit? How does he walk? Supreme Personality of Godhead said, O Partha, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification which arise from mental concoction and when his mind thus purified finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be pure transcendental consciousness. One who is not disturbed in mind even amidst the, the threefold miseries or elated when there is happiness and who is free from attachment, fear and anger is called sage of steady mind. In the material one, in the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil, evil he may obtain, neither praising it nor dispensing it, is firmly fixed in the perfect knowledge. One who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects as the tortoise draws, draws its limbs within the shell is firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. Though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste of sense objects remains but seizing such engagements by experiencing higher taste. He is fixed in consciousness. The senses are so strong and impetuous, O Arjuna, that they forcibly carry away the mind, even of the man of discrimination who is endeavouring to control them. One who retains, restrains his senses, one who restrains his senses, keeping them under full control and fixes his consciousness upon me is known as man of steady intelligence. While contemplating the objects of senses, a person 
develops attachment for them and for such attachment lust develops and from lust anger arises from anger complete delusion arises and from delusion bewilderment of memory when memory is bewilderment intelligence is lost and when intelligence is lost one falls down again into the material pool but a person free from all attachments and aversion and able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of lord for one ha- for one thus satisfied in krishna consciousness the threefold miseries of material existence exist no longer in such satisfied consciousness one's intelligence is soon well established one who is not connected with supreme can have neither transcendental intelligence nor steady mind without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be any happiness without peace as a strong wind sweeps away a boat in the wat- on the water even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away mind's man's intelligence therefore o mighty arm one whose senses are restrained from their objects is certainly of steady intelligence what is night for all the beings in the time of awakening for the self controlled what sorry i will read it again what is night for all beings is the time of awakening for self controlled and the time of awakening of all beings is night for introspective sage a person who is not disturbed by incessant incessant flow of desires i don't know what is this a person who is not disturbed by incessant flow of desires that enters like river into the ocean which is ever being filled but is always still can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires a person who has given up all desires for sense gratification who lives free for from desires who has given up all senses of proprietorship and is devoid of false ego he alone can attain real peace that is the way of spiritual and godly life after attaining which a man is not bewildered if one is thus situated even at the hour of death one can enter into the kingdom of god hum second chapter is over om namo bhagavate vasudevaya